time because the last few times, oh my god, dude, relax. He doesn't want me to get them, so he's dispersing them all through the tank. See, they're so protective, and they're gonna hold a bunch in there. Oh, look at the pecos are getting your food. Your babies are all on the ground, dude. Oh my god, bro, bro, that hurts. A and you're not helpful. Look, now I had to go collect all of these. I'm gonna make you collect all of them now. This is not fair, bro. Ow, ow, ow. Ow. Okay, now go collect everybody. Come on. Produced by Malik. What is going on, world? Welcome back to Aqua Malik. Today is going to be an update type of video where I'm just going to be sitting here talking to you guys and letting you know what's been going on and uh, give you guys some updates on what has been happening with my life and the fish room. Now my dog was pregnant, I'm pretty sure most of you guys remember, I'll put a link to it up here on dog breeding and whatever so you can see the process of what was going on in the summertime and uh, or at the end of summer and uh, so she did, we thought she did get pregnant in uh, the second week of September or towards the third week of September and she was due to deliver puppies this last week. So we did all the math, counted the days. She was going through a complete pregnancy. She, her stomach got big. She started producing a ton of milk. Uh, if you guys are following me on Facebook, I'm pretty sure you saw all the updates and stuff. And uh, so it was all going on and she was eating a lot of food and she was gaining weight. She was, everything was good on track. And so today, the last few days, she was supposed to have the puppies, I think on Wednesday, I believe was the last date of the cycle so then when I counted back and uh, she didn't have no puppies on Wednesday so Thursday I gave her and then Friday I was starting to get worried by Friday because she was not going into labor and uh, her boobs were getting smaller a lot of the milk was coming out and this is not normal like I mean it's not normal signs of a, of a healthy pregnancy so I took her to the vet they were really excited to see her because we, we couldn't go to the vet because of COVID. They didn't want to do x-rays or anything this year. So we didn't actually have a lot of the support that we usually have from the veterinarian because of COVID. So, I mean, all of that probably combined, it just didn't, didn't work out for some reason. So anyways, when we were at the vet, we find out that she was not pregnant. She, so the vet told me what she had was a false pregnancy or a phantom pregnancy. It costed me a ton of money, like I think 350 bucks just for today's visit and the x-rays and uh, to tell me that she was not pregnant. But the good thing is she is completely healthy. She's thick and chunky. She's a hundred and some pounds. She's I think almost 110 pounds. And uh, a lot of it is actually her own weight. So she's not gonna lose more or most of it, but uh, she is a little bit overweight right now. And so we, we do have to do a lot of running and working out and stuff and, uh, and try to help her to gain back uh, her normal size and whatever, which is about close to 100 pounds. And uh, so that's what's going on and that's one of the main reasons why I haven't been making the daily video updates every single day for the last uh, two, three weeks because it's been quite stressful with, the, with being with her and uh, she's demanding quite a bit, you know, she's like a princess, that's what her name is actually, Princess Peach. So she's quite demanding, she thinks she is a princess and uh, I had to spoon feed her food and all this other stuff and she would refuse to eat, she would refuse to go outside, she would refuse to drink water, she would refuse to do all kinds of things just because she knows that I'll cater to her uh, needs when she refuses to do things. So it was a little tough. She was probably taking advantage of me quite a bit and uh, she's still being like that now. So this is all going on. So it's one of the main reasons why I haven't been able to really focus on this. Uh, the next thing I'm going to say is thank you so much everybody that signed into the live stream today. I live stream between 7.30 and 7.45. I'll put a link to it up here so you guys can check out the live stream and see what, was, what it's going to look like. And uh, this is something I really was thinking about doing. And uh, I want to do live feeding videos. Usually a couple times a week we'll decide the dates uh, based on your schedules. And the time I've decided to put them at is 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to about 7.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So between 7.30 and 8, I'll do about a 10, 12 minute live stream in front of a tank with the fish and show you guys the fish eating and doing good. The next thing is I really just wanna, wanna do that because I feel like a lot of times, a lot of you guys 
how Placos and I hear this all the time, Placos are not active, Placos are not Placos are nocturnal, they don't come out during the day, my Placos are always hiding. Mine don't. Like I really say this because it really is the truth. My fish are always out. I look around my tanks, I can see all my fish and I count them and they know me, they look at me. Uh, and uh, so I want to show you guys that this in reality on a daily basis when I walk in here what I get to see so I want that's one of the main reasons why I want to do the live stream so comment below and let me know if the time works for everybody and also um, I don't want to encroach on other people's live streams I mean I'm gonna try my best to not uh, do it while somebody else is doing the live stream so we'll set up some times during the week and do a couple of live streams throughout the week so comment and let me know what your thoughts are on that and thank you everybody that has watch the live stream I think 37 of you guys joined in at the time without any notification or prior notice so like I literally just pulled the camera I was like here feeding the boat to feed the tank and I was like I don't need to feed this tank but I, I do need to show this on camera because these guys were all out they came up to the tank and they were waiting for me to feed them like all my Blaco so I'm like okay this needs to be documented right so that's what I did and uh, we got a really good response so thank you so much and comment and let me know what your uh, preferences are for the live stream and uh, also what type of content you want to see on the live stream and whatnot so we'll do a separate thing about that the next thing I want to say is uh, like I'm gonna do a lot more regular scheduled stuff like this as well as other things that are similar so I just want to give a quick, a quick update on since we are on some sad news I'm gonna give an update on all the fish that died in the fish room at the same time since the time uh, the zebra playcos passed away the eight of them in the summer so if you haven't checked that video I'll put a link to it up here as well uh, CW45 that died from the ick uh, Corridora C89 that died because uh, when I got them she was uh, I don't know I got 10 one didn't make it so that's that one uh, L199 high ancestors fry that passed away through the ick outbreak there's about six or seven in here and I lost about 25 of them I think 23 or 25 so it's quite a big loss for those guys L four seven ones. There's about six or seven in here. I saw the seven actually, and uh, same deal through the A car break. These are the smaller ones. I lost about twenty of these guys, uh, so that's kind of sad. And then uh, these three are Liatacara dosiger. They're a type of dwarf cichlid. Uh, they're quite old. I actually had these guys for about four or five years now. About four years, I would say. And uh, they finally passed away from old age. So it's not too bad or sad or anything like that. So that's those guys, and last but not least, in this bag we have uh, three C096, which are another Corridoras, and uh, the two two of the Auto Sinkless Kokama, which I got recently, which is the recent death. Actually, this is quite sad for me because I couldn't figure out what was wrong with them. I got ten Auto Sinkless Auto Sinkless Kokama. I'll put a link to it up here so you guys can see me unboxing them, and. Uh, Two of them passed away about three days ago, and like suddenly, like no reason, whatever. Now, the only thing I can say, there's two things I thought could have gone wrong. Uh, they are in their own tank, they are in quarantine, but they didn't actually have any visible signs of disease. I mean, they were some of the most healthiest auto sinkless I've ever seen personally, like from a, any tank. Like, I mean, I have auto sinkless in my tanks, in some of the planted tanks and stuff. And they look as healthy as those guys, if not better. So they were good. They were all eating. Everything was good. Uh, the the next thing uh, is that the food. I mean, I, I do. I don't know what to feed them. I mean, I'm trying my best with them, and I've been feeding them uh, crushed up bug bites, and also obviously all the Auschwitz and mom and algae and stuff in the tank. And I did put a giant manzanita wood, like a eighty dollar piece of manzanita wood, in there, like a nice big branch. I'm pretty sure you guys seen that and uh, so that was there and so that I mean they do have food in there but I do feed them other stuff I did feed them tetratropical color granules the day before the two died so uh, I fed tetratropical color granule on the Wednesday and on the Thursday I found two dead fish on Thursday morning so that was the second thing I think that went wrong or could have gone wrong and the next thing I thought was that the tank temperature did drop they are in the back tanks in the bottom and um, through the winter, they, like right now, I checked the temperature and there's 74 degrees right now. It was 72 degrees two days ago uh, when they did pass away. And uh, it was 72 and a half degrees Fahrenheit when I checked. I'm pretty sure it dropped a little bit lower through the night or a little bit higher, whatever. But anywho's, basically, that was the thing that I thought could have happened. But then 
this fish actually can tolerate 68 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to about 76 degrees Fahrenheit and they don't do better in warmer temperatures and that's one of the main reasons why I put them in the bottom row in the back corner tank and uh, so that they do have a tank that fluctuates to, to their natural need which is a lower low 70s so I mean the tank temperature is not a fact factor as well uh, the next thing I thought about was two things could have happened the high caloric food which they were eating like the tetratropical colored granules for example might have been something that they couldn't digest in such a low temperature so that's something to consider as well so these are the things that I, that's been bothering me about that particular death and uh, these are all the fish that have died since the last zebra placo disaster I'll put a link to that up here so where the eight young new zebra placos passed away that I just picked up so I picked up 15 and eight of them died uh, within the first few days so which really sucked also I just want to give you some updates on some of the things that are coming up in the fish room so everybody that stuck it through through the till the end you guys are gonna get the treat I'm getting a bunch of new Playco tanks uh, I did have money saved up for the Playco tanks uh, well that some of that money is what I spent on the veterinarian today so that's kinda sad sad but um, I will be getting new Playco tanks to the fish room. Uh, where I get money from for all this stuff is by selling fish. I sell a lot of angel fish right now. I sell Caradina shrimp and I do sell some Playcos. Uh, you might think that Playcos make me the most money but the reality is angel fish make me the most money. They, they spawn about five six hundred babies every two weeks so that's about nine hundred to a thousand baby angels every month and uh, I sell all of those. You know it's no problem at all and it's a very lucrative business so you know, it, it works really well right now and it has been working for me for a very long time and uh, it's quite lucrative. So that's what that is. And uh, comment below and let me know if you guys want me to elaborate more on breeding fish for profit because I do actually have a lot of actual lifetime experience breeding fish for profit since I was seven years old. This has been something I do on the side and I'm quite successful at not spending my own money most of the time towards buying new fish. So for example, every time, like the last time when I bought those 15 Zebra Playcos, all that money came from me selling angel fish that, that exact week. So it's not bad, you know, it's a pretty good investment uh, in that sense and it does make good returns. So we'll be looking at that more in detail if you guys want to, so comment and let me know. And also stay tuned because there's a lot of cool stuff coming up and I want to do a lot of new changes to the room. And as always, thank you so much for your love and support. I'll see you on the next video. God bless you. See, okay, that's my hand. See how big he is? He's 11 and a half inches tall, complete, probably 12 now. All right, let's get these babies out, dude, and stop panicking. Oh my God, that hurts. Bro, you're...